always a strong contingent from Ballydale. How does how's this year's crop rate? Yeah, they're in good order to be honest with you. Um, we're obviously hopeful uh, rather than confident. It's a strong renewal as usual in the uh, uh, ledger. Uh, thanks to William Hill for their generous support this year. Um, yeah, we're likely to have. I say we've left three horses in the confirmation stage, but we're likely to have three runners. Yeah, and the St Ledger is a race, obviously a Champions Series race. Um, how, how high is that in the pecking order for, for Valley Dahl for you guys? Well, very much so. As we all know, it's the longest established classic. Um, we've campaigned horses with Aidan. Uh, his first run had been in the year 2000 at the turn of the millennium, with his first representative being Rostropovich. We've had 37 runners in the race since then, the most being five in 2008, uh, winning it four times with Milan, Brian Baru, Scorpion, and recently with Lady Knight. Yeah. And then um, the top of the market is Capri. That would suggest it's on theory your strongest chance. How, how's he looking? Yeah, he's in good form. He's come out of the Irish Derby very well after his win there. Um, beating Cracksman, who obviously franked form yesterday in France. Um, uh, Aidan didn't mention that his scope wasn't quite right if he were to run at York and the Great Voltager. Not an issue, everything 100 percent now. So we're more than happy with his well being coming into the race on Saturday. Yeah, and also Venice Beach ran a pretty nice race at York between crack, behind Cracksman. How's he looking? Yeah, he did. He's in good order. He's a well-bred horse as well, which we own in partnership with the Nyarkas family. Um, he, of course, being a half-brother to Dane Dream, who won the King George and the Arc de Triumph. Uh, yeah, he was running on well. Um, he was obviously third in the Grand Prix de Paris as well. He's got, he brings good form to the race on, on the back of his win in the Chester Bars in May as well. So uh, he's in good order and uh, I think he'll run a good race. Yeah, and Douglas MacArthur will be setting the pace? Or? Uh, not necessarily so. We'll just have to see uh, what the competition is like on the day. Um, he can be settled in behind. He's quite versatile, Douglas MacArthur. Obviously, as you know, he did set the pace in Epsom at the Dar in the Epsom in Bestec Derby. Um, but, um, you know, he, he, he's a hardy type of individual. Not a big horse, but very well bred, being a half brother to Woz, who, of course, we all remember winning the Oaks. Um, not a big horse, so I, my only concern there would be I don't think, you know, if there was heavy in the description, I, I think that could uh, just find him out a little. You know, you probably found going at uh, York a little bit uh, soft for him, to be honest. Well, that brings me perfectly on to my final question. All talk is about the ground being in the north of England. Um, what, who's going to enjoy the soft most out of your contingent, do you think? Who's going to benefit most from that? I truly don't believe the ground is going to be too much of an inconvenience oh. because you know it looks like it's raining in Doncaster today, but there's a lot of wind forecast tomorrow and then just sunshine and showers for the remainder of the week. So I can't really honestly believe myself the ground will be an excuse. Um, however, you know, we have three versatile, potentially three versatile representatives, you know, of course, Capri, I suppose, if you want to look at soft ground, when he won the Beresford at two at the Curra, that was soft ground, and when he was third in a group one in Saint Clou last year at two, that was soft ground, but equally we can look at the uh, Curra when he won the Irish Derby being good. So, versatility is the key, and I think the three representatives won't have an issue with the ground.